Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey. We will have some Cowboys rumors for you guys, including one around Earl Thomas. But we're going to get things started with today's show with some news, beginning with Tyron Smith, the injury update for the Cowboys' ever-so-important left tackle. As you'll see from Stephen Jones, Tyron both has a great shot to play and will also be a game-time decision. Now, Dr. Jerry Jones says Tyron's got a neck stinger. I'm inclined to believe that because Tyron Smith always has a neck stinger issue, at least he has for the past couple of years. This is something that will have to be monitored up until potentially game time or even when the Cowboys get on their plane out to Seattle because if Tyron doesn't travel, well, of course, he's not going to play. Here's the exact quote from Stephen Jones, an absolute all-timer, folks. Tyron's got a great shot to play this week. We'll see. It'll probably be another game time type decision for us. So those things are very contradictory. They cannot simultaneously exist. It has to be one or the other. It's going to be the game time decision side. The Cowboys are decimated at tackle. Not only are Lael Collins and Tyron Smith out, Cam Irving, the planned number three tackle, he's out. The Cowboys won with their fourth and fifth tackle starting. Pretty crazy there. The lack of Tyron could be an issue against the Seattle Seahawks. On the bright side, you know, the Seahawks pass rush isn't very good because the Cowboys and Neon Cowboys continue to overlap with their strength and weaknesses. So make your predictions for me in the comment section. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. Will Tyron Smith play in week three? Type three for yes or type four for no. Some more offensive line notes here about players who are not coming aboard. I know you guys are in shambles. Ronald Leary will not be joining the Dallas Cowboys, told Mike Fisher. The deal fell through, or, or fell through, excuse me. I'm not that surprised by it. You guys know I was fine to bring in Ron Leary. He wasn't going to start for you. He wasn't going to fix all of the issues for the offensive line. Now, Fisher did not report why the Cowboys didn't sign Ron Leary. Maybe he didn't want to go the Brandon Carr practice squad route. Maybe the Cowboys are feeling fine about their guard play. and Or maybe there are injury issues for Ron Leary because that's been the case for years now. I will also make note, the Browns didn't bring in Ron Leary either, so it's not just a Cowboys-focused issue. However, Jared Valdir, he's also not going to come aboard. He's going to retire instead. I'll be honest, it's, it's kind of crazy to me to think, hey, the Cowboys offered me a $2.5 million deal to, I think in reality, become their new swing tackle. And Valdir says, nah, I'm just going to retire instead. I don't want to overreact to v Valdir not signing, but I do want to mention this part. The fact that the Cowboys tried to bring him in off the streets and offer him a significant amount of money, that worries me about the health status of Tyron Smith, and I think more so in particular, Lael Collins. Now, Collins can come back after week three ends, but I think Valdir's best at right tackle. I think he's better than Cam Irving to, to begin with. That they were going to offer him so much money, maybe they're a little bit worried about Leo Collins actually being a, a full go after that week three IR time frame ends and he can return. But I am still concerned about the offensive line. So get your votes in here for you. I, I, I want to hear what you guys have to say. What is your panic level at right now with the offensive line? Rate this for me on a scale of 1 to 10. Now, despite all the offensive line issues, the Cowboys found a way to win. They did not cover, so if you're still waiting for, for the Venmo to, to, since the Cowboys didn't cover, I got you guys covered. That is coming today. But I do have some more jerseys available. So for new depositors only, new users, chatsports.com slash bet. Use the promo code Cowboys125. 100 bucks gets you that 125% deposit bonus and it will get you a Cowboys jersey. So if you have questions, all you guys need to do is hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney, and I will give you guys the full details. Let's go now to Demarcus Lawrence, who I know a lot of you guys were freaking out about, where's Tank in Week 2? Well, as we said during the live show and after the game, he was hurt. Lawrence injured his knee in some capacity. He didn't get on the field very much late in the game, and when he was out there, he clearly looked wrong. He looked off. He wasn't right. Now, Dr. Jerry says Tank's going to be fine and good to go for week three. 
I say we will see. I think he's going to be okay. But then again, the Cowboys' Wednesday injury report had nobody injured, and then all of a sudden Tyron Smith and Anthony Brown were, were both out, and Brown's, of course, now on IR. Lawrence has not been good enough for the Cowboys. He continues to be their best run stopper, but that's not why you paid him $20 million. Now, he'd been a bit of a slow starter in, in years past at times. Only 50% of the snaps does limit his opportunities. You need more out of Demarcus Lawrence. The one play he made in the passing game was a well-timed, I think it was third down pass breakup. That helps, but you need more out of Demarcus Lawrence. You, you need him to get you some sacks, generate some pressure. So far, he's been a, a, a pretty big disappointment at this point for the Dallas Cowboys. Now we'll discuss more about Lawrence throughout the week and the pass rush as well. And we know we have a lot of new subscribers here at the Cowboys Report. Thank you all so much. If you're watching for the first time or if you're watching and you're not subscribed, we should probably get you on board here because we are the number one Cowboys YouTube channel out there. If you want daily videos on the Cowboys, which I think you guys do, hit that red button and subscribe today. Over now to some rumors, as promised. Earl Thomas and the Cowboys. Twitter wants it. It's going to happen. I'm going to give it the one star, though. Um, we haven't really changed anything, both on the field and off the field. On the field, the secondary continues to be, eh. The safeties play, especially outside of Xavier Woods, not great. Earl Thomas, though, still remains unsigned entering week three, which is kind of crazy to think about. This past week for the Cowboys, Darian Thompson was your week one starter. His snap count went down. The Cowboys instead chose to rotate in a couple different options. They rotated in Brandon Carr. They rotated in Daryl Worley as well, who's kind of this corner safety hybrid right now for this organization. And the results were meh. Uh, Darian Thompson still played the most snaps. He played, I'll just round up and say about 50% of them. He had one tackle. Daryl Worley was the only one who gave up anything in coverage. He allowed one catch for 24 yards, did break up another pass. Brandon Carr played, but if you weren't looking for number 39, you might not have seen him out there because he didn't actually do anything in terms of tackles or impact plays. So the safety position, as we've said for years now, eh, not really doing much for you. Although I do think Xavier Woods is playing quite well at the current moment. So I am always curious how this particular question gets answered. We still have people putting in 100%. I don't get it. There's just no way. I think it's maybe 25% right now. But I want to hear what you guys think. Get your votes in for me in the comments section. What is the percent chance that the Cowboys end up signing Earl Thomas? Now, of course, if they do get Earl Thomas, I know you guys are going to try and buy a jersey. We'll let you know once they come out. There are some Cowboy jerseys on sale for 25% off. These NFL Pro-Line ones, that's the deal right now at chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey, Dak, Lamb, and Zeke. When you go to that link, you won't just get the Pro-Line jerseys, by the way. Some of these other NFL ones, like the CD Lamb Color Rush, they are still under 80 bucks, so go check out the full assortment at chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. Let's go back to the pass rush now. Are there concerns? Damn right there are. Four stars on this one. The hope for the defense was that the pass rush would be good enough to help mask an, an, inef an inefficient and unreliable secondary. So far, it's been an inefficient and unreliable pass rush. Demarcus Lawrence hasn't really shown up. Alden Smith had a great week one, non-factor in week two. Tyrone Crawford, completely quiet. Dorrance Armstrong, he's not doing anything either. So this pass rush front of Griffin and Smith and Crawford and Lawrence, which I know there haven't been very many third and longs to really let them tee off, and they've had to be a little bit more cautious because the Falcons and Rams were able to run the ball because they were up big. I get it. But you need more out of these guys. This has not been productive enough. Alden Smith, I thought, played great in week one. Came crashing back down to earth in week two. I thought pretty middling performance there. Everson Griffin, I thought, had the best pass rush of anyone in week two. Got the late game sack, had some more pressures, but he's still kind of working his way through and getting back into full game NFL shape and being the prime guy we saw for the Minnesota Vikings, and he's all up in his feelings on Twitter too. Tyrone Crawford. Hasn't done much. And Demarcus Lawrence, I thought he was fine in week one, non-factor in week two in part because of the knee injury. So is this the week that the pass rush breaks out against the Seattle Seahawks? Against the offensive line? It's not great for Seattle in terms of pass protection. I think they can. 
I also know this. This Cowboys team has been wholly unable to stop running quarterbacks for years. So as much as I want to say yes, I will be pessimistic and type in my N for no. Let's wrap things up here with Dalton Schultz. Has he done enough at tight end? Is he enough at the position? I'm going to give this three stars. I am still down to go explore Cameron Brait. But a lot of us out there that kind of owe Dalton Schultz a bit of an apology. It, not good in week one. That's still accurate. The two fumbles in week two nearly sunk the team. There were huge issues there. But overall, I think Dalton Schultz has earned another crack at being the starting tight end for the Dallas Cowboys with Blake Jarwin injured. Nine catches, 88 yards, one touchdown. If he just didn't fumble the football, I mean, A, who knows what ends up happening. But he's a still a solid blocker. I was fairly impressed overall by Dalton Schultz. I called him a winner after week one. He did briefly get benched for Blake Bell, but he got a chance and he truly redeemed himself in that game. Now we'll see if Dalton Schultz is able to keep that up or if he just ends up being more of, you know, just a guy here. But overall, I was pretty pleased with the play from Dalton Schultz. The fumbles, of course, kill you. But if you can get that type of play, minus the fumbles, you're fine at tight end. You don't need Dalton Schultz to be your number two option. You need him to be your number four or number five, and I think he can do that for the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the Internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.